Swerve give you your money back. She was one of those that brightened my day by leaving. I said, listen, yeah. just go. Uh, but no, no, I'm sure you can do it and you're so, okay, fine. So um, did the procedure twice, my expense, I'm incurring lab costs, gave her a break on the price in the first place because- Stand by, you know, caller. No, you know, parents have known her since, I've known her since I was a kid, whatever. 80 some Hello? years old, okay. Yeah. So it's one of those things you just chalk it up, man. You just chalk it up. Uh, uh, you know, uh, sometimes now, of course, you know, with her and her children, some of whom were my friends, <laughs> I don't know how they feel now. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, you know, my name is Mud. I'm guessing I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so you, you do your best. Some, yeah, you win yeah, some, you, know, you lose some. As, you can't win them you all. Know, every now and then you're going to take an L. Right, right. Taking out. Well, well, well. One second. We got a caller here, um, and so caller, if you can just tell us, um, you know, your first name and your city or or state, you know, where you're calling from, and then your question. And your and your zodiac sign. Yeah. Yes. Uh, two cases. Uh, phone phoning from uh, down <laughs> south and the nasty bit. Yo, shippy, ship, ship! Uh, it wasn't as nasty as it appeared uh, on Christmas Day. That was always just, you know, a metaphor. But anyway, Dr. Law, Dr. Law <laughs> Anthony White, yeah, what a real champion, no question. And uh, you have been Dr. Law <laughs> well before you got your credentialing, your official credentialing. So I know you from back when. Um, oh, shit. your story is exactly as my story is. And you seem like you, uh, read, uh, uh, strumming my pain with your fingers and sang my song. Okay. <laughs> so since the fourth grade, yeah, I always aspired to be, uh, like you in that dental profession. And so, uh, I can remember maybe five years old, my dad <laughs> asking me about white supremacy and what I thought it meant. Well, it sounds just like Leland. And I said, I didn't know. And that was not an acceptable answer because I had to talk with him and figure it out as I was going across the back of the bridge uh, uh, from Illinois to St. Louis. But right. from Illinois to Missouri, we should say. But uh, yeah, um, you said a lot. And like you say, we like to see uh, some patients walk in, but we're more elated when some walk off. Man. Uh, it's Tell a rough it. business. And being the best that you could absolutely possibly be. And dentistry, that field there is an art and a science. But it comes also with a lot of uh, medical uh, necessities, such as psychiatry. Man. <laughs> Man. So I would like to say, on the five point system, if you are in the 4.5, even if you're at the 4.0, that's great because the scale should actually be at 10 to reflect what it is. Now, social media is two different, uh, is a whole different world, totally two different things. Uh, my kid went on to see what I did uh, about five years ago. And we're riding down the street and say, Dad, you must be doing a good job at the office. I said, why? Why would you say that? How do you know that? He said, well, I looked at the social media. Mm. So what we know in this particular business and in most businesses, and probably in every business, one good word uh, by word of mouth will reach one or two people. Mm. One bad word will reach 10. Mm. And yeah. it's a crazy situation. But uh, I can honestly say... Um, the education, uh, even the mentoring, depending on your, the age of your patients and what you see, uh, will go a long way. Uh, I myself practice dentistry, and I've seen kids from, you know, I've been in my place about 20 years, but I've seen them from uh, middle school to actually matriculate into college and then some of the older ones matriculate and go past that. It's an everlasting um, 
challenge for oral health care. But more importantly, the people that you come in contact with and the representation that you give is everlasting mm. in a lot of ways. Oral health and looking at a uh, black uh, professional, especially if you're dealing with people of color, not only black. Right. They see what they can be. And I like to say that you're truly inspiring. And I can also say that uh, at one particular point in my life, early in my career, I worked at Comfort Dental Studio. So how blessed am I? And how blessed am I? There, <laughs> ship, you know, ship, ship. Very. How blessed am I? Training, <laughs> yeah, I saw man. what was real about what I learned, and I learned to enforce a lot of different things. So um, I think our stories are uh, Hey, TC, did you stay with me then? Uh, Were you staying with me too? And uh, uh, have definitely caller no question in call the line our past. Thank caller, you. wait, caller. He has a question for you. He was asking if you were uh, staying with him at that time. Oh, ho, 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 ho. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I thought you were staying with me. I got there. All right, so here it is. I stayed uh, at uh, Doctor Law's home along with Zach. You know, <laughs> my that was during a trying <laughs> period in my time when I thought maybe, and we shouldn't always take, you know, we need we we need punches in the road. I was there for a particular reason, and God had sent me there for that reason. Mm. I scored uh, in the nineties on the uh, part one and part two, uh, dental uh, uh, practice practitioners exam. But when I took the licensure exams, combined reason, I scored a hundred percent. On Call, the clinical. Caller. One in the question. Southern, in the Southern. In, in, in the Southern. Let me just finish up. Southern. <laughs> they said, and I guess they knew I was black because I was the only black person taking <laughs> the examination test in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, I came up short. Yeah. But I had an Illinois license, and I did go and stay with Dr. Law. And uh, <laughs> Dr. to the world, Law. I want everybody to know. Uh, my ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but caller, and that was a trying time. But yeah, I stayed with him, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we are what? Well, doctor, doc, doctor, caller. One one question I'm going to ask both you doctors since since you're on the phone. It was a question in the chat, and it was actually our next question. Um, how has well? I'll read it as it was in the chat since um, it was in there. Um, one second caller okay so how have emerging technologies impacted your practice and what is your decision making process when acquiring new technology so uh who wants to take that first it's a great question man that is a great question I'll, I'll, well, uh, i'm gonna get off I'll, my phone right here i'll take it first all right well hold on uh, he, he, go your on, ship's go gonna on. take it no, 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 go ahead go, go ahead go, go ahead dr Kaysen. go ahead go ahead okay 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 i'll i'll, I'll say this uh, uh to the question as best i can remember it because there's a lot of things on my mind and when we start talking about finances well when uh dr law went to school he went to school at one of the best schools uh dental schools that it was with the cheapest tuition in the country i got accepted there but Dr. Law is a different breed. <laughs> uh, he can finagle a lot of different things. Me going to the University of Illinois, well, I knew that I was a different breed myself. And <laughs> I was uh, knew that if I could not make it, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't because I was black. So I technology, took, uh, technology, a different path. And, and my my funding, my funding, uh, or my educational cost was much more than his. But to say this. Um, the question, um, technologies, uh, cutting edge. You should be there mm -hmm. if you want to deliver the best quality care. Now, like Dr. Law once said, uh, you know, you want to be on the cutting edge because you want to deliver the best health care, not substandard, mm -hmm. in our communities than anyone else's. Mm. Now, my community of patients is different than his. Uh, there's a great migration to the South, and that has been going on for a long time. Mm. And me being from Illinois, I can honestly tell you, uh, my practice in Illinois will look much different than it does now. 
mm. because uh, maybe I'm gonna say maybe I fifty five percent of my patients are white. Mm. Mm. So uh, <laughs> I think as we do the migration, uh, technology is cutting edge. People, uh, well, uh, people, white people come in there and they're so stunned about the technology, which is mm-hmm. basic or what should be basic, but white boys don't invest in because they don't need to. Right. I got you. I got what you're saying. <laughs> I got what you're saying. See, I when they got come you. in and they want to see something totally different. Yeah. So they see it. Yeah. Like a uh, feed off. And then the presentation and the treatment and the quality of care that you give them is above uh, uh, acceptable. And yeah. they look at that as phenomenal. And it's a change in dynamic in how people view the world. I have had Trumpsters come in there. No problem. <laughs> we could talk about it if you want to. <laughs> but the quality of care, the quality of care is what most people are interested in, despite all, all ends. And right. I, that's my thing on cutting technology. Yes. Yeah. Man. Well, well, uh, doctor, we appreciate you chiming in. Um, shippy ship this, ship. And your noop is saying your ship is saying shippy ship ship. See, I got my headphones on, noop. So he shippy ship ship noopy noop noop. And that's And uh, yeah, that's what we do. We 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 don't create frowns, and we don't uh, create uh, issues that you put your hand over your mouth. We make you smile, and we uh, once you smile, it create pleasant hearts. So there you have it. And uh, that's my, uh, well, can I say 1913? <laughs> you can say whatever you want, nope. <laughs> okay, good. And I'm out Yo, club. And I'm yo, club. Hey, yes, yo. sir. Uh, yo, yeah, James yeah. Club. Yo, appreciate you calling, too. Yeah, he's, yeah, a, yeah, he's a great, great supporter. Yo, and, sure. uh, so, so, yeah, we want to throw that uh, question to you as well, uh, Dr. Law. Well, man, you know, this is, you know, when we talk about, um, this is what separates good from great. Uh, I, I find a couple things. Technology is one thing, but you have to you have to have uh, you have to educate yourself to know what technology. See, you can always spend money in dentistry. Dentistry is like it can be like a bad habit. It, it can be like golf. You know, endless endless pit where you can just throw money and after uh, dollar after dollar on things that. Uh, you know, the latest, fancy, shiniest new technology or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I really have to, the way I approach it is by uh, factoring in the, re- the ROI, return on investment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for instance, uh, the, when I made the decision to expand my office, originally, I was going to expand my office down the hall. There was a dental office right next door, actually one door over that closed. And I was going to use their office um, for two additional chairs. But then in my same building, uh, another older dentist retired who had three chairs. And I said, well, let me see if I can move into this spot. Uh, the landlord wanted to charge me a higher rate for just a little bit more space. Okay. So I said, well, kind of as a giving him the finger, I said, let me l- look around and see what else is available. So I went out during lunchtime and found this other spot. And, um, you know, I told you about how the negotiation process went with that. One. Oh, yeah. But what I determined was because I have a 10 year lease where I am, that's going to be in effect for another, yeah, another five years, another five, four and a half years, whatever. But um, with the rate that I expect to grow because of how I have grown, it is, it makes, I'll be more profitable by adding an entirely new office location and keeping the one that I have. Mm. Analytically, you had to. Yeah, well, I could have just stayed where I was. 
I got a but, but yeah, you're getting that six figures in the bag right. and all. Yeah. But yeah. I couldn't, but it made more sense for me to go to a new spot that's more money, more rent, more space, more, you know, more, more, more. They have potential for five chairs. I'm going to put in four chairs, but it's built out for five chairs because I'm, because the two chairs that I'm working now are as profitable mm. as they can be right. given that I'm not going to work 24 hours a day. Right. So at this new location, I can bring in another dentist, which I will do uh, this summer. I can have uh, extended hours. I can have the flexibility. See, when I only have two chairs, if I have two patients scheduled, I don't have any flexibility if there's an if there's an emergency. Right. Right now. Right. But I'll have that flexi or I'll I'll have that flexibility then. You have an emergency, come in right now. Right. I got two chairs scheduled, but I got one or two open. You can you know use them. So um, it is a hard. It's a real hard look at the return on investment. So um, the new technology allows you to make more money, be more profitable, uh, but you have to have the education, the continuing education and the insight to uh, take advantage of that. Right. So what I found is that as I become, as I go to these continuing education courses, as I learn these new techniques, I can look at the same mouth that I looked at five years ago and say, hey, there are some other possibilities here that we can treat these things that we didn't know how to deal with five years ago mm. because I didn't have the knowledge then or I didn't have the technology then. Right. So um, 